This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show is Next Level Racing and what they are showing off at this year's E3. Now, for sim racers, this year's E3 was a bust, with the exception of Wreckfest, WRC8, and the booth that was dedicated to sim racing that was Next Level Racing at E3 2019. Next Level Racing had a good-sized booth that was drawing quite a crowd with a variety of sim racing products, some that we've seen in the past, and a whole new variety of sim products designed specifically for us, sim racers. When I think of most sim rig or sim chassis companies that come into the market, they start off at a certain level, and over the years, they refine their product, they upgrade their, their production skills, their quality of their parts, and with that comes an increase in price. And often we see that bottom end, the starting point in the sim racing market, kind of left by the wayside. In the case of Next Level Racing, they have made huge upgrades in quality, construction, materials, and in design. And we have seen a slight increase of prices over the years, but they haven't left that beginner market behind. In fact, that was part of the theme of E3 2019, an introduction of new entry-level sim racing products. Keeping the entry point low, and then at the same time allowing for future expansion. Brilliant. In addition to the beginner low-end market, they've also come out with new products for that high-end sim racer as well, without compromising the beginners, and they have also continued to improve their mainstream products by making them better with each new generation. Now on this show, I've already reviewed a selection of products from Next Level Racing, like the FGT Sim Chassis, the GT Track Sim Chassis, and even the Motion Platform V3. Now at E3, I got a chance to see these new high-end and mid-range and low-end products from Next Level Racing, and I'm gonna be very eager to get them here into the studio where I can really do some extensive testing and give you a full review. But for now, the best I can do is really kind of show off or tell you about these new things that they did have all the way again from beginner to the most advanced sim racers on earth, starting off with the wheel stand racer. This is a wheel stand suitable for using with a couch in front of a desk, or just pulled up to a chair. It resembles the wheel stand light, but is less expensive coming in at only $119 and will have a seat add-on mod available soon to expand it into an entire rig. For a wheel stand, it is quite adjustable in angle, height, pedal distance, and then on top of that, it's collapsible for easy storage. Despite its inexpensive price, it still looks to be made of quality and stable for a wheel stand type rig. From there, they've also taken the original wheel stand, which will still be available, and then they put it on steroids and beefed it up to handle a direct drive wheel. And that gives us the wheel stand DD. It's a built with an A-frame designed wheel stand with extra cross bracing to make sure it does not flex at all under heavy load. It will cost $299 and it will be a good option for the heavy wheeled guys with limited space. It features an adjustable wheel deck in height and angle, adjustable pedals, and will have a future seat expansion as well that will turn it into an entire chassis. The wheel stand DD also comes with a shifter mount and it's reversible from left to right. So with both of these new products, Next Level Racing has maintained that modular design, allowing you to start off with a wheel stand, adding a seat to it later, turning it into a full chassis as you become more dedicated to sim racing, allocate more space or allocate more funds to your sim racing world. Now, if your path from the very beginning has been a full blown rig, well, the prices have grown over the last few years and that entry level has become a lot more costly. Next Level Racing has two new products to answer that need as well, starting off with Challenger Cockpit. It is a low slung, minimalistic design that is a perfect entry point for new racers. For a complete rig, it is inexpensive and takes up a very small footprint for a full chassis. And at 349, it's quite a chassis. It has a super thin seat, very similar to that found on its big brother, the FGT. And despite its flat shape, it's fairly comfortable. It will handle and accommodate all size drivers. It is a center post design but it seems that the post is close enough to allow for good pedal work. And despite that low price point, it still allows for all of the adjustments we sim racers demand. It has seat rails for an adjustment seat to wheel distance. The wheel deck can be adjusted up and down and in angle. The pedals can be adjusted front to back and the shifter mount, which is included, can be mounted left or right. 
Now let's take a slight diversion or a trip down memory lane. The Play Seat Challenge was one of my all-time favorite designs. It was easy to store and it was the instant option for those limited on space or who were decoratingly challenged and had to put their sim rig away when they were done racing. It was reasonably comfortable, it was reasonably priced, and it was reasonably strong for what it was. And in my place, even in my place where I have so many sim rigs to choose from, I still had a need for such a rig because I could pull it out of the closet and put it in front of the living room with my consoles for some general casual gaming. And that takes us to the next level racing FGT Lite cockpit. This new product, it resembles a play seat challenge in that it looks like a piece of poolside furniture for during a summer laying out in the sun. But in fact, it is a sim rig. It's a full portable, collapsible sim racing chassis that offers anything from an upright GT position all the way down to a lay down F1 type position. It's super lightweight and it's easy to put away in a closet or room corner when done racing. The whole chassis is built from tubular steel with fabric and padding wrapped around it. The adjustments are done by these giant heavy duty plastic cam mechanisms. Lift the handle, unscrew it a touch, and adjust the angle of the seat back, the seat bottom, the height and the angle of the whole seat, the pedal distance and angle as well. And keep adjusting it until you've achieved the driving position that you want. All this for only $249, which is the same price as the Play Seat Challenge. Very cool, very innovative, and a great option for a certain part of the sim racing market. Now in 12 months since the last E3, this has already been a lot of products from one small company, but Next Level Racing also brought a keyboard and mouse tray as an option. It's $129 and it's a great add-on to any sim rig that didn't come with a keyboard and mouse. Many of us still leave these things on the floor or on a TV tray or something inadequate. It's adjustable in height and then each deck is independently adjustable in angle and honestly is one of the most needed things in all of sim racing. But the real star of the show, in this case we're talking about E3 for me, was something very special, something over the top awesome. Next Level Racing had brought their Traction Plus motion and this thing was incredible. An entire GT track was mounted on top of this thing with a motion platform V3 installed on top of that. The Traction Plus motion with the dual rail side to side motion for the entire rig. The front and back end of the chassis had its own slider to reproduce the motion of slide, slip, drift, or any kind of traction change while driving. When you look at its design, it's like a miniature version of the type of sim you'd see at GM, McLaren, or other automotive empires, but this one fits in your game room and is designed specifically for us, the everyday sim racer. The idea behind the Traction Plus motion is that when you are diving into a corner that you will feel the front end's traction. If it starts to wash out under understeer, the Traction Plus will slide out with it. If the rear end starts to come around, that the Traction Plus would then slide your rear end over, giving you that same sensation. Combine these effects with the Motion Platform V3 seat and it becomes one very active, very wild ride. I did get an opportunity to drive this at E3 and this setup showed some really good potential for me. But as usual, in a public setting of non-sim racers, Next Level Racing had the settings very high in a sort of shock and awe style that was doing a great job of wowing the general public. But for me, it was well beyond the point of distraction and into the world of roller coaster action. But even with that, the effect I felt of the rear end sliding when drifting or when I was rear wheel steering with the throttle off the corner, it was one of the most fun, most distinct effects I have felt from a motion sim. It was downright fun. I would slide through the corners for the sheer pleasure of it. Contact with other cars was also very distinct and could almost be felt with a thud. It was fun to drive and to be honest, it was just cool to watch in action. So with their settings and my very limited amount of time actually driving it in the seat, it was hard to tell you more than I already have. To give you a really strong opinion, I would need to review it. I would need to have it here in the shop to do some extensive tuning and testing to get it just right to give you a perfect opinion on how it really feels. And I can only hope that we'll get one here someday. The Traction Motion Plus goes for $5,999. So that means it is not cheap and certainly not for all. 
But when you think about it, six grand for the Traction Plus, three grand for the Motion Platform, another thousand practically for the GT Track, well, that is still under $10,000. And that is a whole lot of tech, that is a whole lot of fun, and it is something that anybody could have in their game room. So I know, and I will apologize, that this might have felt like or sounded a little bit like an infomercial, but hear it from my perspective. I've been going to E3 for over 10 years, and I've seen firsthand that micro niche that sim racing represents in the entire gaming market. And this year, 2019, was the worst year ever in terms of representation of sim racing at this show. And I have to thank Next Level Racing for being one of only three booths even showing sim racing and them doing it in such a wonderful light. Having a great selection of products from beginner to advanced, wowing the crowd, keeping people interested and showing off what sim racing is all about. I have to thank them for that. And I can only hope that someday we'll get that traction plus motion in here so we can really do some extensive tuning and testing and give you a formulated opinion. So I hope you've enjoyed the special report on Next Level Racing from E3 2019. I'm sure we'll see more from them in the future. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to get more sim racing information as it comes out. Be sure to thumbs up if you enjoyed watching this show. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.